The court, la cour. Morning. Mr. Woodward. My justices, uh, New Chartlet uh, addresses the question uh, in two ways that British Columbia raises, where British Columbia says that Mr. Desotel had a common law right to hunt, but it's unprotected and uh, that it was somehow missed by Section 35. Uh, New Chattel has two, two responses to that, and it's in our factum. First of all, uh, British Columbia gets the history wrong. Uh, in 1980, there was the first draft of the Constitution was circulated, um, and it included a schedule that was a closed list. Uh, it, it was it threatening by not including Aboriginal rights to demote Aboriginal rights to unprotected status. Uh, the First Nations argued and the Chatlet argued we were there at the Joint Senate and House of Commons Committee in 1980 arguing that the constitutional, the, the Aboriginal rights were already of a quasi-constitutional status and that this closed list threatened to demote them. Um, and so that had to be fixed and it was fixed in two ways. Uh, when the Constitution eventually came to its final draft, it was fixed by making the list in the schedule um, an open list, that's why the word includes is there. And of course, the other big way that it was fixed was by Section 35 itself. The uh, Aboriginal rights were recognized and affirmed. Now, I know the word elevated has been used by this court. Um, uh, I, I think uh, I, I'm resisting that word because I'm uh, the, the position all along has been that those rights already had a kind of quasi-constitutional status right back to the Royal Proclamation of 1763. Elevated is best understood to mean uh, what Section 35 actually says, recognized and affirmed, brought out of obscurity into our understanding. That's what happened. In, and so British Columbia is simply wrong to say that there was something left on the cutting room floor, that those that there's a bunch of common law rights that weren't protected. The opposite happened. They were protected from being demoted by the Section 35 process. The second point that uh, New Chatlet makes is uh, with respect to the new statute. Now, British Columbia legislature passed an important statute, the Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples Act. That was uh, just under a year ago. First uh, legislature that we know of that has adopted the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples. Um, and that uh, statute, the statute that adopts that, it's in, it's in my factum and it's in my condensed book. Um, the, the operative section is section three, which says in consultation and cooperation with the indigenous peoples in British Columbia, here's what it says. The government it, must it take seems all to me measures that it, it necessary. It seems to me, sir, that if you are saying that the meaning of 35.1 is changed by the enactment of a statute, Presumably, it can no, no. be changed by the repeal of the same statute. No, I'm, I'm not saying that, the, that, that this statute, I've, I've moved to a second point here. The statute I'm talking about is the United Nations Declaration statute of British Columbia. The first point is that British Columbia got their history wrong. Now I'm on a different point, which is that this statute, uh, the United Nations Declaration statute, um, puts certain obligations on the government of British Columbia, not to derogate from the rights of indigenous peoples, not to derogate from the mandatory obligations in the United Nations Declaration. Now, uh, this is historic, this is unusual to have um, a government imposing that restriction on itself, but the legislature did that. And what this is about is hypocrisy. It's contrary to the project of reconciliation to allow a government to be hypocritical, to raise the hopes of indigenous people by saying, yes, we adopt the United Nations Declaration, and then to send lawyers into court to say the exact opposite. So th that's our point here, is that uh, the, um, the, section, uh, the sections of the United Nations Declaration that I'd like you to look at would be sections 26 and 36. 26 uh, says that the rights will be protected, not just recognized, but also protected 
Now, um, British Columbia says, well, the right, the right exists, but it's not protected. That's the problem. They can't say that anymore. They passed a statute adopting the United Nations Declaration. The other important section is Section 36, which explicitly refers to the fact that some indigenous peoples are divided by international borders, exactly the situation in the case at Barr. And they have the right to maintain their, uh, it says, their contacts, relations, and uh, activities for spiritual, cultural, political, economic, and social purposes. Certainly it would be enough to include the situation at the case at Barr. That's the statute that British Columbia has bound itself by. It's not just, their arguments are not just wrong, they're wrong to advance those arguments in the face of this statute. Those are my submissions. Thank you very much.